Good day, everyone. My name is Mauro. Uh, as Vaitea said, I'm an aerospace engineer from Argentina. How I ended up here? Uh, well, after working for several years in the oil industry, I realized that I could contribute uh, to a better future. So I changed my career goals to renewable resources, especially the hydrogen sector. Here's where Inaptor comes in. So I work as a project engineer on system integrations and technical assistance for customers. Now, a bit about the company. As or, like they already said, Inaptor is a multi multicultural company that designs and manufactures electrolyzers uh, with a, a high, high efficient electrolyzers. So the core technology is built on this unique anion exchange membrane and our goal is making hydrogen cheap and accessible to, to everyone. So what we do, we design and manufacture electrolyzers. So like the experiment we used to do in school with two electrodes immersed in water and we apply some current, then we split the water molecule into oxygen and hydrogen that the hydrogen goes to the cathode. With our electrolyzers, we do quite similar, but in a much more efficient way. So, um, like for example, the PEM electrolyzers, the proton exchange membrane electrolyzers, they are like a high efficient and low cost, like the alkaline ones. Flexible operations, we means like. Uh, we can use intermittent resources like the solar energy. So we can storage our, our hydrogen and then choose the destiny of our stored hydrogen. For example, we can make synthetic fuels where carbon is added to, to this to produce liquid fuel. This carbon can be recycled from industrial processes or even captured from the, from the air using filters. So if we combine this CO2 with hydrogen, then we get a synthetic fuel, which can be gasoline, diesel gas, or even kerosene. Uh, also, we can produce energy using a fuel cell. So we will have electricity and water, or we can directly burn it uh, on a heater, for example. Remember that hydrogen has more energy per kilogram than diesel. So it's like about 33 kilowatts versus 10. So one of our challenge, challenges uh, we are facing right now is cost reduction. So what better to reduce cost than mass production? We are planning to mass produce our electrolyzers. So here on the slide, we can see an analogy between computer manufacturers and the uh, before and after the personal computer came, came into the market. Right now, manufacturers are making large scale electrolyzers comparable to the big size computer from the top picture. So in the picture below, we can see a robust alkaline electrolyzer with a big production output only usable in industries. Our electrolyzer will be like the personal computer of that. Uh, it consists on stackable modules so we can connect together as many as we want to satisfy our needs. For example, we, we generate the amount of hydrogen uh, needed only for or we can stack a bunch of electrolyzers inside the container and produce the same, uh, the same amount as the big alkaline in, in the picture. Okay, let's talk about the electrolyzer. Each module produces 500 normal liter hour. This is around a kilogram of hydrogen a day. As I said before, for example, if I need four kilograms of hydrogen a day, I just connect four electrolytes together. Like, uh, like I said, they are stackable. So the only thing we need to provide, apart from electricity, of course, is water. And this water should have a conductivity of 20 microsiemens per centimeter or less because we don't want impurities to, to damage our stack. For this, we can use a filter tap or rainwater. And as a result, we get a hydrogen with a 
accurate of 99.9%, where the main impurity is water vapor uh, and an output pressure of up to 35 bar. This is because our cells allow differential pressure when hydrogen is produced. So it actually on the cathode side and then starts building pressure until the valve inside the electrolyzers open and uh, the hydrogen starts coming out. Okay, the anion exchange membrane working principle will be better explained by our colleague Sean in a moment. But basically, gathers the advantages of the PEM electrolyzer and the alkaline one. In comparison, for example, the PEM electrolyzer needs expensive novel metal catalyst materials, such as iridium or platinum, and uh, also large amounts of titanium. Since the, the operational environment of this type of electrolyzer is highly acidic and corrosive, the anion exchange membrane electrolyzer, on the other hand, uses semi permeable membrane where uh, that, only, uh, that only conducts anions. So it's a great alternative to PEM. With all the same st uh, strengths and some advantages like low, lower price. Uh, lower price because we were working with a much less corrosive environment. And for this reason, stainless steel can be used instead of titanium for the bipolar plates. Just to sum up, our electrolysis provides flexibility and fast response like the PEM, can tolerate a lower degree of water purity, uh, which reduces the complexity of the water input. And compared to traditional alkaline, the uh, anion exchange membrane has a much simpler balance of plant because we produce high purity hydrogen compressed and directly compressed directly from the from the stack. Okay, now we have our electrolyzer. What now? Do we manually turn it on when we need to produce hydrogen or, or can I see how much hydrogen uh, my electrolyzer is making? Or if I got more than one, how do I make them work together? For all these questions, there is a, a, an operative system specially developed for any energy system where I can connect together, not only the electrolyzer, but also a fuel cell, a hydrogen tank or a sonar panel inverter, for example. And it is as easy as scanning a QR code on the front panel of the electrolyzer with, uh, with the smartphone and add it to the cloud. On the cloud, I can monitor the parameters, uh, make it work, work together with other energy devices and set some rules. These rules are uh, based on command line interface. So I can make the electrolyzers and other devices uh, work according to my needs. We call this um, EMS or energy manage, management system. So on this slide, we can see the EMS and its extension modules. These extension modules can perform many features uh, and due to the rule-based control, the system can be programmed to be as versatile as, versatile as needed. For example, the system can regulate uh, production rates to keep the, the output pressure stable at a certain pressure point, also regulate which devices are running and when, or for example, uh, I don't know if I can set, if the solar irradiance sits over than 600 watt per square meter, then start the electrolyzer. Now we go to use cases. In this first case, our electrolyzers were used to produce and store hydrogen to be used as a seasonal storage. A thing that cannot be done with batteries because we, we all know batteries will discharge over time. Here, uh, also we can use some refilling stations like for cars or this in this case for drones. Oh, well, what is more it's turning than flying a drone, it's flying it for two hours. Uh, as I said before, power to heat, uh, hydrogen has more energy per kilogram, so it's excellent for heating as well. 
in the industrial processes, in this case, uh, nitrogen is produced via a PSA system or pre pressure swing absorption. So to achieve a high purity of nitrogen, we need a large system. In this case, we integrate our electrolyzers with uh, our hydrogen. So with, uh, with uh, having a smaller PSA system and, and integrating our electrolyzer, we can achieve a high purity nitrogen uh, resulting in a more cost-effective nitrogen generator. So uh, power to gas, like in Australia, synthetic uh, natural gas is being made, made using methanation. Uh, the, this process, this methanation process, is the conversion of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide into methane, by basically by adding hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. This house is located in Chiang Mai, in Thailand. Here, any excess power will be converted and stored as, as hydrogen. When sun doesn't shine, the stored hydrogen gas in tanks generate electricity by using fuel cells. So the mi uh, microgrid in this island is only accessible by food. So the hydrogen backed energy system is completely fossil fuel free and provides energy to several houses, a school, a workshop and a medical dispensary. And finally, we achieve a lot, but more challenges are waiting for us. Uh, so we have set the target price of 1.5 euros uh, euro per kilo by 2025 in order to be competitive with fossil fuels and we are working towards that every day. Thank you.